My name is Derek, and I'm from glazy.org. Today I'm going to show you how to mix a test batch of glaze. The first thing you're going to need is a respirator and gloves. Respirator is extremely important and a necessity. Ideally, it has a P100 rating, or use whatever your workplace or studio requires you to wear. There are two major types of scales that you'll find in the studio. One is a triple beam scale, and the other is a digital scale. Triple beam scales are actually pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it, and you can find very good deals on used triple beam scales on eBay and other sites. Here are two digital scales, also made by Ohouse. The 200 gram Scout Pro is very useful for making test batches of 100 or even 50 grams. The 0.01 gram readability is very useful when you're measuring out very small amounts of, say, colorants like cobalt carbonate. The 4000 gram Scout Pro only has a 0.1 gram readability, but when you're dealing with larger batches of materials, this shouldn't be a problem. Another tool you may frequently be using in the glaze lab are sieves. Sieves come in a variety of mesh grains. 40, 80, 120, and 200 are pictured here. For glazes, I usually use 100 or 120. That ensures that I don't get any spotting. Make sure your sieves are cleaned before and after use. The talisman sieves are very high quality, but you can also find much cheaper sieves that do the job just as well. Here are the containers I use to store my test batches. These containers are of pretty good quality. They have lids so I can prevent the glaze from evaporating over time and they fit the sieves very well. Usually in our glaze studios, our materials are stored away in large buckets or bins and difficult to get to. In many glaze studios, we're also charged by the amount of material we use. So it can be very inconvenient when say, we're writing down an inventory list of only one gram of cobalt oxide. Instead, I keep all of my frequently used materials in separate small containers. Each of these containers has its own spoon, and it's very easy to set these up during a glaze making session and mix up a bunch of tests. So let's first measure out a test batch using the triple beam scale. First, we'll get an empty container and using a bit of tape and a marker, write the name or the glazy ID of the recipe that we're about to make. I also pull up the recipe on glazy.org on my phone so that I can use the batch calculator. We'll put the container on the triple beam scale and then use the tear and the fine adjustment knob to zero out the scale. Once the triple beam scale has been counterbalanced for the weight of our container, we can start to make our glaze batch. With the glazy recipe pulled up on my phone, I'll scroll down to the batch form and enter 100 for the batch amount. It's important to note that 100 is a relative amount. We could be making 100 kilograms of glaze, or we could just be making 100 grams of glaze. Of course, in this case, we're making 100 grams. We'll also be using the weigh together option. This means that instead of weighing out each ingredient one by one, we're going to weigh them together. You may notice that although we put 100 for the batch amount, our total amount is still 102. This is because the additive ingredients are added in addition to our batch amount. Our first step is to measure out the first ingredient, which is 21.5 grams of silica. I measure out the silica into a mound, which means I can easily take away part of the silica if I weigh out too much. Next up in this batch is 19.8 grams of EPK kaolin. Because we're using weigh together, 
I don't want the scale to read 19.8, but rather 41.3. This is 19.8 plus 21.5 grams of silica that we've already added. Again, I measure out the ingredient in amount so that if I measure too much, I can easily take some away. The third ingredient in our recipe is minspar. We're going to need 19.6 grams of minspar, which will make our total 60.9 grams. On the triple beam scale, I make sure that I've set the weight to 60.9 grams, and then I start measuring out the minspar. I'll keep measuring out ingredients in this manner for each line in the recipe. When I've finished weighing out the glaze, the scale should read a total of 102, which is 100 grams of the base recipe, as well as 2 grams of additional colorant. Now let's measure out the glaze again, but this time we'll use a digital scale. Using the digital scale is a little easier. All we have to do is put the container on top of the scale and press the tear or zero button. Once again, I pull up the glaze recipe on Glazy and enter 100 for the batch. As on the triple beam scale, I'm going to first measure out 21.5 grams of silica. Because I'm still using the weigh together option, I'm going to put another 19.8 grams of EPK into the container. This will give me a total of 41.3 grams that's including the silica and the EPK. I'll do the same with the minspar, adding 19.6 grams, so that the subtotal is 60.9 grams. The final ingredient I'll be adding is the 2 grams of extra mason stain, which will bring my total to 102. Once you've used either a triple beam scale or a digital scale to measure out your batch, you can dry mix the ingredients using a spoon. Next, add about 50% of water. That's either 50 grams or 50 milliliters. 50 grams is just enough to soak all of the particles in the glaze. Wait a few minutes for the water to soak in and then mix again. Now we have two options for blending the batch. Perhaps the easiest option is just blending it with an electric drill with a mixer blade or an immersion blender. I tend to use electric drills because the immersion blenders tend to burn out after a few months. Ideally, you should use the drill to blend the mixture for a minute or two at very high speed. The other mixing option is using a sieve. Sieving definitely takes more time than just blending it with a drill or an immersion blender. But by using a 100 or a 120 mesh sieve, we can ensure that there is no spotting in the glaze. Spotting can occur in light colored glazes like celadons that have small amounts of additives like iron oxide or cobalt. To sieve, I use a rubber rib to push the mixture through the sieve as well as a spray gun to ensure that I don't leave any material in the container. Now that we've blended or sieved our test batch, we can cover it with a lid and use it whenever we're ready with our test tiles. So I hope this tutorial made it clear how to make a test batch. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at Derek at Glazy.org or join the Facebook Glazy support group. Thank you.